Hey there, Eliza. How's everything going on your end? I'm sorry for not being able to keep in touch as often as I'd like. No worries at all. I completely understand that you've been swamped with work at the law firm. Feel free to take your time and get in touch whenever you have a chance. I'll be happy to catch up whenever it works for you. Thanks for understanding, Eliza. Oh, by the way, how are your sons doing? I heard Wyatt is still dead set on following in my shoes and going for a legal career. Any updates on that front? Oh, you know him better than anyone, I think. He's always looked up to you as an amazing lawyer. He said it countless times that he wants to be just like you when he grows up. It's really sweet to see how much he admires you. Well, I gotta say, it's pretty flattering. Wyatt definitely has the potential to make a mark as a successful lawyer. Even from his early years, I could see that he had a natural talent for academics. I'm confident he'll ace his upcoming exams. Tell him I wish him the best of luck. And hey, if he ever faces any challenges, I'll be more than happy to lend him a hand. Not to toot my own horn, but I was quite the excellent student back in the day. Your grades were always on fire. Making me look like a potato next to you. Ugh. The struggle was real. Just a little reminder that being in your shadow wasn't exactly a walk in the park. <laughs> I'm sorry, sis. I didn't purposely set out to outshine you in school, so don't hold it against me, alright? Anyway, there's something else I've been meaning to talk to you about. Oh. What is it? I'm all ears. You see, it's been pretty hectic, but things at my law firm have finally been getting stable. So I've been thinking... Maybe it's time I should start focusing on myself a bit and consider settling down. You know, getting married and all that stuff. Oh wow, seriously? I've been eagerly waiting to hear this from me for ages. That's great news. So, tell me, have you found that special someone? Yeah, I guess so. Her name's Peyton. She's a really beautiful woman and she's got a strong sense of pride. Oh, and by the way, she's actually 10 years younger than me. I'm actually kind of excited to introduce you to her. I think you might like her. Can't say for sure, but let's see how it goes. Oh, wow, Dylan. That's fantastic news. Nathan sounds like an amazing woman. So, here's the big question. Do you think you're going to pop the question and marry her? I want to marry her. In fact, she's already accepted my proposal. I can't even begin to describe how happy and relieved I felt when she said yes. Wait, hold up. You're telling me you proposed to her without even giving me a heads up? I had no idea Peyton went from being your girlfriend to your fiance just like that. How could you keep something this major a secret from me? I thought we were tight. Well, Eliza, I, I'm sorry. You know how I, I've had a rough time at the relationships, right? I guess I was just afraid of getting my hopes up and then things not working out again. I hope you can understand, sis. You mean the world to me, and I just wanted to be absolutely certain about my relationship with Peyton before bringing it up with you. It's all good, Dylan. I know you've always been cautious. And honestly, it's not a bad thing. So, when do you think Peyton and I can finally meet up? I'm excited to get to know her better. I hope it can happen soon, too. I'll talk to Peyton and see if we can arrange a get-together for all of us. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to invite your husband as well. It'll be great to have everyone together. Gotcha. I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, sweetie. I was just thinking about the lunch I packed for you today. I hope you're enjoying it right now. How's it tasting? Eliza, I have to say, this beef stew is absolutely incredible. It was so easy to just pop it in the microwave and bam, I had this delicious steaming hot meal right in front of me. I can tell you put a lot of time and effort into preparing it and I really appreciate it. Thanks. Oh, it was nothing dear. I found this new recipe online and made a few tweaks on my own. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. By the way, don't forget that we're going to visit my brother's new house tomorrow morning. You mentioned you didn't have any special plans for tomorrow morning, right? No, I'm free tomorrow morning, so I can come with you and the kids to visit your brother's new house. I've only seen it in pictures, but it looks massive. It seems like Dylan is doing really well as an owner of his own law firm, doesn't it? Absolutely. He truly is. And you know what? 
Our son Wyatt has been really inspired by Dylan's achievements. I can see him becoming a lawyer in the future if he puts in the effort and works hard enough. It's amazing how much of an impact Dylan's success has had on him. I totally agree. Wyatt has such a great time whenever he's around Dylan. It's fascinating how well they get along despite the age difference. They have this special bond that's really heartwarming to see. You know, Elias. I have some concerns about visiting Dylan's house tomorrow. Why are you concerned? Did something wrong happen? I mean, I have a feeling that something doesn't sit right with Peyton. Do you remember the first time we met her? She didn't seem particularly joyful as a bride when we were talking. It's a bit concerning, isn't it? I noticed the same thing. Perhaps she wasn't feeling well that day? If you're worried about Peyton, it might be best to have a direct conversation with Dylan about it. By the way, have you given any thought to Dylan's offer from the other day? Oh, you're referring to the offer he made about potentially adopting one of our sons? That's the one. What are your thoughts on it? I can understand why he considered it. It must be challenging for him to come to terms with the fact that he can't have biological children. Initially, I didn't think he was serious, but his sincere attitude indicated otherwise. It seems like he really wants to adopt one of our children and treat them as his own. Well, I wouldn't say I'm opposed to the idea, but I can't help but have lingering concerns about the strained relationship between my brother and his wife if they were to adopt. Would Peyton be on board with the idea of having an adopted child? And what about our sons? How would they feel about it? Well, I'm not entirely sure. When the moment is right, we should definitely have a discussion about this with Peyton and Dylan. But for now, let's not stress ourselves too much. I'll touch base with you again once I'm home, all right? Okay. Love you. Eliza, I heard the wonderful news. I simply want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to you and Wyatt. I heard about his acceptance into his dream law school. He truly excelled and I couldn't be prouder. Aww. Thanks, Dylan. I really appreciate the support you've provided in his academic pursuits. You've been a great help. And I hope you know that, despite your busy work schedule, you still made time to assist him with his homework and exams. It means a lot. You should know that you're the biggest inspiration for Wyatt in pursuing his career as a lawyer. I'm glad I could be of assistance. By the way, I was considering congratulating Wyatt for his passing exams. But then I had another idea. What if we throw him a surprise party instead? What do you think? Do you believe Wyatt would enjoy the idea? That sounds fantastic, Dylan. I can't believe I didn't think of it earlier. I'm sure Wyatt will be absolutely overjoyed when he discovers there's a surprise party planned just for him. He's always been the type to enjoy surprises. So this should be perfect. I think it's a great idea, but let's get Elias's opinion on the matter. It would be good to hear what he thinks about the idea as well. Absolutely. I'll definitely have a conversation with him about it as well. Once we both come to an agreement on a plan, I'll make sure to keep you informed. Great. I'll do my part to assist with the party preparations. Regarding your offer from the other day, have you had a chance to think it over? Are you open to the idea of me adopting one of your children? Oh, that? Honestly, I'm still carefully considering it. There's a lot to take into account. Like how it would impact my son's lives and how Peyton might treat the children who wouldn't be her biological kids. By the way, is your wife supportive of the adoption idea? Don't fret over Peyton, we discussed it already. I'm glad you understand. But I still can't make a decision right away. I need more time to involve my sons in the discussion and hear their thoughts on the matter. They're in high school now and capable of making their own choices. So it's important to get their opinions as well. Please give me some additional time to have these conversations with them. Phone, Peyton. Where are you? What is wrong with you, Dylan? I don't want you calling me anymore. If you do, I'm taking legal action. You're being so persistent. It's ridiculous. It's me, Eliza. Dylan's sister. My brother has collapsed and is now in a hospital. Oh, I am terribly sorry I mistook you for Dylan. You said he collapsed? I received an urgent call from the office of my brother's lawyer. 
they informed me that he had a sudden collapse and was rushed to the hospital. It appears that Dylan suffered a stroke while at work and is currently unconscious. Staff at the law firm also mentioned that they were unable to reach you. I tried calling the landline, but received no answer. And unfortunately, I didn't have your cell phone number. Luckily, my younger son stumbled upon a smartphone among my brother's belongings, which allowed me to contact you. So, could you please come here as soon as possible? I'll send you the details of the hospital where Dylan was admitted. Oh, I get it. Well, I'm sorry to break it to you, but I can't make it to the hospital at the moment because of some prior stuff I've got going on. Just make sure to keep me updated on how my husband is doing, all right? Oh, really? But can't you find a way to free up some time? You should be here for your husband during this difficult time. Jeez, you're just as annoying as Dylan. No wonder you two are siblings. Listen, I already said that I have some really important stuff to deal with right now, so I can't make it to the hospital, okay? What? Are you kidding me? Dylan is your husband for crying out loud. You can't just abandon him like this. Peyton, are you even listening? Peyton, are you there? This is really urgent. So please respond as soon as you see my message. What's the matter? Is Dylan dead? What? No, he's alive but still unconscious. Why haven't you visited him at the hospital? I'm neither a doctor nor a miracle worker, so I can't do anything for his recovery, unfortunately. Instead of pleading for me to come to the hospital, maybe you should concentrate on taking care of Dylan. Just let me know if there are any updates, okay? I can't spend the whole day replying to you. Who do you think you are? Trying to boss me around and tell me what to do throughout this whole time? It's been my family who's been by Dylan's side. Even my son had to step up and take on the responsibility of visiting my brother daily on my behalf. And you? You never bothered to reach out or show up at the hospital. Not even once. Tell me. Do you even care about my brother? Huh? What kind of question is that? You know what? I don't think you even need to respond to that. I already know the answer. You, you know? I did some investigating, and it turns out that you and my brother were introduced through a marriage counseling agency. Did you marry my brother solely for the security of his profession as a lawyer and the promise of a comfortable life? Tell me the honest truth. Ha! Do you really think you can go around making accusations without any solid evidence? If you keep throwing these unfounded claims at me, I might consider taking legal action against you for defamation. But hey, I'm feeling generous today, so I'll let it slide for now. Everything seems to be going my way, and with a little more time, that big fat inheritance will be mine. <laughs> Eliza, looks like you've been doing a fantastic job handling everything since my husband's passing, huh? Seems like I made the right call putting you in charge of planning his funeral. I can't even begin to describe how sad and depressed I felt when I heard the news of Dylan's passing. It hit me like a ton of bricks, you know? Oh, really? If you were truly as sad and depressed, as you claim to be, then why didn't you even have the decency to show up at his funeral and pay him some respect? And where were you when Dylan was battling for his life in the hospital? You've got some serious explaining to do, Peyton. Explanations? That's a good one. Don't even make me laugh. I don't owe you or anyone else any explanations, okay? Actually, as my husband's wife, I have the legal right to inherit his estate, which is valued at 80 million. This includes the house we shared together before his passing. Since we don't have any kids, everything falls into my lap. <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? It's quite a pity, isn't it? 
If you had just listened to your brother and allowed him to adopt one of your sons, I wouldn't be the sole inheritor of all his assets. But hey, it's too late for that now. You can cry and plead all you want, but the money will be mine. Now all that's left is for me to figure out the best way to spend my newfound wealth. Wow, you really have quite the imagination, don't you? From what I heard, you and Dylan are already officially divorced. I also heard that you were actually ordered to pay alimony because of the affair that caused the divorce. I guess it's just an unavoidable situation. What? How did you find out about it? I'm aware of everything now, so don't even try to pull the wool over my eyes anymore. So what if you know? I'm not obligated to pay alimony anymore. There's no one left to pay. The right to alimony also transfers upon inheritance, so you'll still owe it to me, the sole inheritor of my brother's estate. What? That doesn't make any sense. How could you possibly be the sole inheritor? It's supposed to be me. Can't you see what's happening here? Since your divorce is finalized and our parents are no longer alive, I'm the only remaining family member. Therefore, it's only natural that I inherit everything that my brother left behind before he passed away. But don't I deserve half of the estate now that the divorce is settled? Didn't Dylan provide you with funds when the divorce was finalized? I happen to have the receipt certificate right here. So you can't deny it. Besides, Dylan also acquired a house prior to the marriage. So it isn't subject to property division. That, that can't be true. There must be something left for me. I should at least get something out of this divorce. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. There's still a life insurance policy. I should be the beneficiary. You may not be aware of this, but I actually changed the beneficiary of Dylan's life insurance to myself. Pretty clever move on my part, right? Do you honestly believe that my brother, being a great lawyer, would overlook such an important detail? Absolutely not. As for the life insurance, Dylan was a thorough person, so he already made the necessary changes when the divorce was finalized. He switched the beneficiary to my name. What? I can't believe it. Why is everything going against me? I thought I would have it all after Dylan's passing. This just doesn't feel fair at all. I married a lawyer thinking I would secure a wealthy lifestyle for me. But all I got was a mere pittance. And now I have to pay alimony. It feels like an enormous mistake. Wow, looks like the unfiltered truth is finally coming out from you. Well, guess what? You're not alone in feeling that way. Even Dylan himself had similar thoughts. You regretted going to a marriage counselor and realized what a huge mistake it was. Although he never shared those feelings with me personally, his honesty was well known among his colleagues and subordinates. So, anything else you want to say to me? You, both you and your brother are just awful people. I deeply regret ever having any connections with your family. Hey, Tin. When are you planning to pay me the alimony? It's been four months and not a single dime has come my way. You do realize that you're legally obligated to make those alimony payments in installments, right? If you don't want me to get the authorities involved, I suggest you start making those payments. What's your deal? Can't you see how utterly miserable I am right now? I don't even have a single penny to my name. Why don't you give me a break for once? I couldn't care less. You're simply facing the consequences of trying to deceive my late brother for money. If you're broke, get up and start working. Don't count on anyone to come to your rescue anymore. Your lazy lifestyle led you to this point. So if you want to change your situation, Work hard and earn your own money. That's the only solution for you. Do you really think I haven't considered working? Well, let's face it. I wasn't born to work. It's just so dull and draining. I'd much rather explore other easier and less stressful ways to make money. 
So, you claim that you have no money left, but I've heard that you married a wealthy man, correct? It shouldn't be too difficult for you to fulfill your obligation and pay me the required amount of alimony. How do you know that? So, in a desperate attempt to gain quick wealth, you went back to the marriage counseling agency and targeted yet another wealthy man, deceiving him with false promises of love, right? During your short-lived marriage, you took advantage of his trust and tried to scam him. But your plan quickly fell apart when he saw through your lies. Believe me, he's gathering evidence to report you to the authorities. What? What do you mean, report me to the authorities? There's no way he would do that. And how do you even know about it? Or are you just trying to scare me? I'm not here to joke around with you. Have you forgotten that my brother was once a respected lawyer and I still maintain connections with many of his colleagues? It appears that your husband has hired one of my brother's colleagues as his lawyer. I suggest you brace yourself for the worst case scenario, Peyton. You won't be able to escape this time. No way. Please, Eliza, do something about it. My husband is my only hope for a better future. You have to intervene before he does something foolish. Please, I'm begging for your help, Eliza. Peyton, she has been arrested for marriage fraud and now faces the consequences of her actions. It was a lawyer from my brother's law firm who revealed the truth, stating that no alimony payments were ever made to me. When I consulted the lawyer about the situation, they informed me of the recent developments, including her arrest. It seemed unlikely that I would receive any alimony payments in the near future. However, my primary concern was not the alimony itself, but rather seeing her face the consequences of her actions and experience the fate she deserved. I firmly believe that my brother would agree, which is why I wish for a thorough police investigation into her wrongdoings. I hope she's charged as a felon and brought to justice in court. In the meantime, my family unexpectedly relocated to a house that was left behind by my brother. Inheriting his property, my husband and sons were overjoyed at the prospect of moving into a spacious home. A stark contrast to our previously cramped apartment. Amidst the excitement, my eldest son, fueled by his newfound determination, immersed himself in his law studies, witnessing the interactions between his brother's colleagues and my son's subordinates. He developed a strong yearning to pursue a career in law. Though my brother never formally adopted him, I hold on to the hope that my eldest son will carry forth my brother's legacy and excel as a lawyer, just as he aspired to be.